experience! This is a quick fantasy football update for Tuesday, October 29th. Almost spooky time with Halloween. Don't be afraid to tune into the Spread Pick Show coming out on Tuesday evening. And you still have one last chance to get into that draw for 500 bucks cash. All you need to do is sub to Mayo Media Network right now. If you're looking for the updated pickups and cheat sheet and power rankings, hit the show notes and boom, the link to the Mayo Media newsletter is in there right now. All updated for you. All right. Monday Night Football, the Steelers win 26-18. Tyron Tracy Jr. suffers a concussion towards the end of the game, thus thrusting Devin Singletary back in to the starter's role for the New York Giants. Tracy looked amazing in this game and completely dominated the backfield usage for the Giants. So, if he's able to pass protocol... Then he'll play next week and he'll be an auto start for your team. But being that it was on Monday Night Football, he's a rookie and rookies have been missing a lot of time, at least a game with a concussion anyways, I would not expect him to play in week number nine. So if Singletary was dropped, you can go pick him up, make him a fringe start for week nine, but he's not an auto start like Tracy would be. On the other side of the ball, Russell Wilson looked fine again. Pickens looked fine. Probably should have had a double tap touchdown, but hey, couldn't get that other foot down. But the biggest thing to note from this offense right now since Russell Wilson has taken over has been the demise of Pat Fryermuth. So what's been happening is that Pittsburgh now with Michael Pruitt back in the active roster, he's playing when they play two tight end sets. Previously, Fryermuth had been in there with Darnell Washington. Now that is not happening anymore. Fryermuth is only really p- playing on passing downs only in like clear passing downs or in 11 personnel. He played 75% of the snaps in 11 personnel, but that's only been two catches per game in the Russell Wilson start. So not very playable, not very ownable at this point, and with the defense being so good with Pittsburgh and them trying to confuse off their defenses a little bit, whether they're going to run or pass, Fryermuth being on the field is kind of a dead giveaway, a dead giveaway for a passing situation. So Fryermuth is probably droppable at this point, or he's just back on that mix of streamable tight ends if you're in a pinch. Hopefully, you're not in a pinch and you don't need to play Fryermuth every single week. The Daily 49ers update for everyone. Debo is day-to-day with an oblique injury after leaving Sunday Night Football. So it's not a ribs. It's an oblique. That's not, I mean, it's not great. Ribs isn't great. Oblique isn't great. Fortunately, the Niners are on bye in week number nine. So we'll get more information on them about 10 days from now. CMC's practice window is going to open during the bye week. He is fingers crossed, expected to come back in week 10. We'll see about that. Jordan Mason reactivated a shoulder injury, so he should be fine moving forward after taking the week off with the bye. So if CMC can't go, Mason will play. So Garendo is probably not a very good pickup at all. And Juwan Jennings should be back in week 10 as well with his hip injury. Some quarterback updates heading into week nine. Derek Carr is expected to be back. Not a certainty, but is expected to be back against the Carolina Panthers. Great news for Taysom Hill. Great news for Chris Olave. Great news for Alvin Kamara. Great news for the Saints in general that they're not starting Spencer Rattler anymore. Who would have thought that Derek Carr would have been such an upgrade at quarterback? quarterback but here we are when you're a league average quarterback it's shocking how much better you are than everyone else in the bottom half and the backups of the NFL right now it's a great matchup for Derek Carr. I don't know if I play him but at least for your skill position guys that you do want to play on the Saints it's a positive uptick playing the worst defense of a while put it that way in the Panthers Jordan Love has a groin injury. He's day-to-day. I don't think he's going to play in Week 9 with the Packers going on by in Week 10. If you have aspirations of winning the Super Bowl or at least being competitive, having a healthy Jordan Love is paramount to that. So putting him back out there, not nearly 100% against this Lions team, it's probably not the route you want to go. He's obviously not officially out, but that's the way that I'm leaning right now. When I put out the rankings on Wednesday afternoon, you can sub to that in the newsletter, get them sent to you, and I'll try to break them down a little bit on Thursday as well. Jordan Love, unless we are told that he is for sure starting, is going to be out of those rankings and it will affect the Green Bay players. Otherwise, Malik Willis will end up being the starter. Not actually a bad spot start for Malik Willis fantasy purpose wise because if Detroit continues to score at the rate that they've been scoring then all of a sudden Malik Willis will have to pass or run or do whatever the hell he has to do and we saw that 
Mason Rudolph was able to put up yardage. The fantasy points didn't quite translate, although he did run an RPO, which was hilarious. And it worked that Willis should be able to gobble up some garbage time fantasy points potentially in that game. Or they just go back and forth and everything is all good there. No word yet on whether it's going to be Bryce Young or Andy Dalton starting at quarterback opposed to the New Orleans Saints on Sunday. But what we do know right now is that both Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen are both on the trade block. The trade deadline is Saturday, so we should know this news pretty early on in the week, hopefully before Thursday night football. But right now, I would expect both of them to either not be there or not play, and we don't know who's playing quarterback for them. So if both of them are not there, Leggett and Coker are the two guys that you might want to have. You want to have them on your roster. Whether or not you want to play them, that I don't know. But at least Bryce Young did seem to have a bit of a connection with both those guys against Denver on Sunday. The Saints defense, obviously not as good as the Broncos defense, but a lot of it kind of takes getting into garbage time first before you know the defense softens up a little bit and Bryce Young can actually complete some passes. If it was Andy Dalton, then both of those guys could end up having a little bit more value, but we'll wait and see what happens with Johnson and Thielen. Just keep those guys on your radar right now. If Thielen was dropped in your league, maybe go spec pick him up for free because he might get traded to a absolutely fantastic destination. If not, you can just drop him again, but there's a chance he gets thrust into an offense that can actually move the ball a little bit, which would be nice, you know, for fantasy purposes. And that's what we're here for, your fantasy team. More quick updates going through everything. DK Metcalf is optimistic to return in week number nine. Brian Thomas was being talked about to miss two to four weeks with this chest injury, and now he's day-to-day all of a sudden. No clue what's going on with him. I'm guessing he sits, but we'll see. Obviously, Christian Kirk out for the season. Parker Washington would be the pickup there right now, unless Gabe Davis can miraculously come through his shoulder issue if he plays. I mean, both those guys right now, if they're going to be thrust into starting roles, are worth a spec pickup if you play in deeper formats. T. Higgins is day-to-day with this quad injury. Would not be shocked to see him miss week nine again. Soft tissue injuries, especially being the second soft tissue injury of the year goes from hamstring into the quad that he saw miss two weeks last time he could miss with two weeks this time he already missed week number eight and alan lazard is now week to week with a chest injury so he is probably not going to play on thursday night football for against the houston texans and on the other side of the ball don't think we're going to see steph Diggs. we do as of this recording we do not have the results of his mri as of right now which is probably not good Uh, I'm expecting the worst with Steph Diggs. Hopefully it's not that bad, but you should probably start proactively planning like you're not going to have Steph Diggs either for a while or the rest of the season. Most definitely not on Thursday Night Football against the Jets. Again, all the pickups are down in the newsletter link in the show notes. Smash like and get into that draw for 500 bucks by subbing to Mayo Media Network right now. All right, I'll see you on Thursday. Experience! Experience!